Monday, May 13th. Hello everyone, today I'm going to bring you out to our garden for an update. We got this cauliflower here and what's special about it is that I'm letting it grow to where it's uh, sprouting. So normally with a cauliflower you want to harvest it before the curds loosen up and before the green stalks start to develop. I'm actually growing it for the green stalks because it changes the flavor. It gives it a crunchier texture. You can cook it uh, less and then it has more flavor than a cauliflower. And the reason is because we've been harvesting cauliflower and I need a change of pace. Um, and we've been able to grow the brassicas. Brassicas are your cauliflower, broccoli, sprouting broccoli, sprouting cauliflower uh, with a higher efficiency. You can see how many plants we're able to keep ha happy and healthy. Let me move my hand so you can see all that green. And so we're not keeping up with eating them. You'll see a bunch of them that are still on the plant. We actually should remove them so that it encourages more uh, shoots. If we leave them, they're gonna, the plant's gonna sp spend all its energy on producing seed and not producing more of these shoots that will grow into things that we can harvest. And with uh, vegetables, it's hard to find people to share with because not everyone eats as many vegetables as us. So I'm going to ramp down on the number of succession plants and the interval that I uh, succession sow so that we can have um, fewer uh, worries of having to come out to make sure we're always maintaining the plants. One plant that we don't have to worry about maintaining is the zucchini because it's getting warmer now and when it gets warm the zucchini cranks out like crazy so we have to make sure we're out here to harvest them and when you grow your own plants you don't have to grow them to however the vegetable looks like at the market this, uh, same example with the cauliflower you can you can harvest it early or you can harvest it late with the zucchini you can harvest them when they're baby zucchini you can stir fry them pickle them or you can harvest them when they're three inches or you can wait until they're big and massive and harvest them and make zucchini bread. But typically you want to get them when they're uh, small and tender because they're sweeter and butter, more buttery. And right now we have three plants because early in the year they don't grow as much. So we can just harvest the little tiny ones from three separate plants and you'll have enough for a meal. But once it gets warm, we're going to remove the extra plants because we're going to have more zucchini can, than we can handle. Um, along here we also have some flowers growing to add interest to the space. This is straw flower. I'm growing it for the first time. It's a very um, low maintenance type of plant and flower. So it grows here and they they're, they help one another with the sun because it can get very hot when there is sun here in Southern California. Even though today is overcast, it's uh, typically very sunny. And speaking of color, we also have some Lady of Shalat roses that are in bloom. And the other thing with uh, California is we can plant densely and planting densely does help the plants out. We have a watermelon vine that's down there and then next to it is a pepper plant and then next to that is a tomato plant. And when you plant dense, you can account for the height. That's the root, there's plenty of room in the ground for them to share the root space. It's the height and you don't want one plant blocking the, another from sunlight. So the watermelon vine, just like that setup right in f uh, where we were just at, the watermelon vine is going to stay low. The plants that grow tall will grow up and they'll get that sunlight that they need. So it's about mixing different heights. Again, plenty of room in the soil for the roots. More examples of uh, vegetables that we need to eat. More examples of succession planting, more brassicas. I'm experimenting to see if we can grow cabbage during this warm part of the year. See if we can get a summer harvest of cabbage. These are shishito peppers. They're starting to form. And more brassicas in different stages. And then let's see what's out here. This thing. Oh, cool. This is a cheddar one. This is a cheddar cauliflower. And then that one is called flame star. We've been eating the artichokes, the wheat out front that we use as a border and hedge is turning yellow. So I'm going to remove them soon and we're going to use a different plant as a border and hedge, pumpkin vines. So they'll just grow out there and it keeps our, our um, 
area uh, sealed off, quote unquote sealed off. Let's see what else we have. Um, this area is corn, so I'm growing corn out here for the first time. We do get a lot of sunlight now that the sun is coming overhead versus early in the year when it's coming at an angle. When it comes at an angle, our house creates shade in this place, but overhead it's enough to grow corn. So we're growing corn here. This is time for the 4th of July. That's the uh, Burpee Triple Crown XP corn. And then we have some Huckleberry Gold potatoes here. We grow potatoes year round and we try to match up the sun conditions, microclimate conditions so that we can get a good harvest. I think I'm trialing, trialing this out, this spot here, but I think this is a good microclimate for potatoes because we're closer to the house and we get more shade. Here we have another patch of corn. This is early sun glow and it's timed for Memorial Day. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Memorial Day is coming up pretty quickly, no? It's just barely now tasseling. We see some of the ears um, we're, that are showing, starting to show. Got some more succession brassicas out here. That's a um, snow crown cauliflower. This is sprouting broccoli, asper bro broccoli, eastern magic, sprouting cauliflower, Fiorello 70. And then in the back, we have some onions. Uh, I'm going to see how much they will get, uh, how big they'll get. And they were planted again back there where early in the year when I planted, there was more sunlight. And as the sun angle uh, changes, more of that sunlight is uh, covering this bed. So you can literally see, I guess they want to dem demo this way. That's where the sun goes. And then as it changes from that point on to here, we'll get sunlight. Let me um, close the gate here real quick. And then my wife found some cool metal signs. I'm attaching them with magnets right now uh, for our garden. So this is a really cool one, locally grown. And then we got another one over here that says, welcome to our garden. And I'm just seeing if I pass by anything interesting. Um, here we got some flowers in here. This is a gladiolus. This is a white one. We have some blues and some reds. So it's gonna be a nice white one for uh, some patriotic colors. This is an anemone. And typically we grow them in the fall. The company that I purchased bulbs, um, they sent them over. So I'm not sure if it's a case where they're not sure they're they're not aware that California's climate is too warm to be growing uh, an enemy in the spring, or if it's a case that an enemy can be grown in the spring and fall. So that's something I'm watching. The plant's growing. We'll see how it does as summer comes around. Let's head into the backyard and um, show you what's growing up here. We got a bishop cauliflower. And this one, I'll harvest it as a, t a traditional cauliflower for the tight curds. We got a succession um, purple moon. This is a purple cauliflower. I'm going to see if we can grow cauliflower year round. I know we can grow broccoli year round. I'm going to see if we can do the same with the cauliflower. In the back, we got some sunflowers and some tomatillos. And I hope that the tomatillos will grow along the fence and maybe we can just go on the other side and harvest it if we need to. And I'm just trying to see if there's anything uh, interesting to report. I guess this is the most interesting thing to report. I got these filet beans growing in this container with our variegated calamansi tree. Um, I, and I should be removing it, but it's been growing since last, I think I planted in last summer or last fall. Uh, and it's been a print, it's been behaving like a perennial plant, something that I haven't seen with beans. So I'm just gonna let it go and see what happens. At the very least, I can harvest these as seeds and plant them. That's the French filet, the variety is Nickel. And as we come down, we got some strawberries in this vertical planter, and they got some more Nickel beans in this pocket. So here's the spelling, N-I-C-K-E-L. Um, here are our Vago mini planters. I got one planted with herbs as it's intended. Some Thai basil, some curly basil, chives. This is uh, green onion 
And then this one I have planted uh, with some other types of brassicas, leafy brassicas, bok choy, and gailan. And then uh, what's sprouting in here, the green bits there, that is tulsi. Um, more specifically, um, what's it called? Rama tulsi. You got some more succession brassicas. Happy Ridge, that's a sprouting broccoli, so you can see that. These I need to plant, these brassicas. That's a Monte broccoli, and that's another um, sprouting type. And then in the garden, we got a lot of green that's filled in. Um, a lot of the tomatoes have filled in, and the brassicas have filled in. So we got, there's a broccoli. And I've noticed that when they're small to medium size, that means the plant has better potential at producing side shoots. So once we harvest this crown here, we're going to be able to harvest these side shoots that will pop up and we can harvest um, weekly to every other every few days. And uh, when we put them all together, it's about the same size as the head or if not even more. And then next to it, we have a cauliflower. This is a bishop and it's making ahead as well and this one I might just leave the girl as a sprouting type and here in the back that's our vago planters and the tomatoes they don't grow as fast because there's not as much sunlight back here yet especially with the peach tree filling the leaves in it's more shady so um, with the tomatoes that's okay the cucumber not so much the cucumber really needs a lot of sunlight and I would move the planter, but the planter is kind of staked in there because of the, the peach tree. So I'm kind of a, at, a, at a crossroads here. Do I leave it there or do I move it? But I'm going to leave it there because I have another cucumber plant growing. And let me just um, turn around here to show you our other tomato plants that are growing. They're filling in and I do see some fruit sets that are pretty far along the way like these Cherokee purples. And you'll notice that uh, with the way we grow, you'll notice that I haven't pruned away any of the bottoms. It's, um, it's actually more beneficial with the way we grow. I'll show you guys how to do this in the near future. Um, I want to keep this as a guarded secret because the way social media works is someone will take it as their credit and then um, they collect all the views and all the sponsorships. So I'll show you guys in the future on uh, growing tomatoes without, with very minimal pruning. The only pruning that I do is just to control for the, the suckers. So I, I want to show you guys that in the future. Um, and I also need to organize my thoughts so that I can communicate in a very efficient manner and something that's also somewhat entertaining. So those are challenges for me that I'm working on. I've been working on that for the last 10 years, um, making sure I'm getting better at it as a communicator. The Vago hose reel, they sent over the hose reel. I purchased their uh, steel post that you can use and their steel post allows you to go 360 degrees and uh, this is not a way to post uh, um, secure your hose reel because it can be, unless you know what you're doing, it can create uh, a hazard. That thing can fall on somebody and uh, I'm, I have it the, where it is, where people don't normally walk around there, especially my kids. This is a closed off kind of a garden because of the way it is. But with the way I have it, I can get the hose reel and go, let me just secure it, go to the side yard. So I don't have to have hoses over there anymore and have to worry about tripping on them. And then I can go, um, if I wanted to, to the rest of the yard over there. Although I prefer to have a, a different hose just laying on the ground. Because there is um, some effort to retract it each time. There's pros and cons. Tra retracting is good, but it takes a little bit of time and effort. And I can pivot it, go up and hand water up there if I need to. And then I can hand water over here as well. And one of the long-term long goals I have is to create an automated irrigation system, but I'm a very modular type of person. So I want something that I can 
easily change up if I plant different plants and even change up because of the temperature. Um, if you can get in very granular, your plants will be very happy and they will be pest and disease free. So I do a lot of hand watering based on the soil conditions, not just based on a timer. Um, same thing over there, you can see uh, I prefer to hand water, but a lot of the plants there I can turn on the irrigation and they're happy with the amount of water I give. Let's um, continue on. Let's see what else I have going on over here. This is the last of the rainwater. We got a lot of rain this year. I prefer to water with rainwater for many reasons. It doesn't contain the salts that you find with groundwater and salt accumulation is what hurts plants. The, um, I've been dealing with a raccoon that likes to dig up this bed and unfortunately it keeps digging up these onions and I don't know how much more the onions can handle the shock before they stop making me nice big bulbs. I'm trying to experiment to see if we can get some Walla Walla onions during this time of year. And the other thing I'm experimenting is moving um, our tomato plants towards the back so we have this front side to plant with. Uh, we have this sprouting cauliflower that I need to harvest. This is a true sprouting cauliflower. This is the Fiorello 70 and you can see the, the way the green stalks look. That's what I was trying to tell you, um, describe earlier in the video. Then I got some Gailan that's down here. And these are uh, happy green plants with very few holes. So once again, if you set them up right, you don't need to put any kind of pesticides, even organic. And then, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I lost a couple of San Marzano plants because a tortoise got in there and moved the fence and the chickens scratched them all up. But I, I'm glad that I do have one and they're very productive. So I won't get a, a big, big harvest like I did last year, but I at least have one and um, roses are just in profuse bloom this year because of the amount of rainwater. Now I know why the, the sea of roses is in Portland. They get a lot of rain up, up in that climate. Uh, this, the roses just love all that rain, I feel. And then over here in, uh, in this bed here, we have another row of the early sun glow corn and we have a single row you're supposed to plant them in multiple blocks but corn can pollinate pretty easily and the reason they're in a single row is because uh, I limit the space to, to here because I don't want to grow too much and take up over our yard uh, my kids and I we, we play out here we throw the football and stuff so we want to keep it nice and open and also we're already growing quite a lot with the space that we have designated got a watermelon plant and then um, these are some more tomato plants. I'm just trying to see if there's anything noteworthy about them. They're making these beautiful blooms and we are in the right temperature for them to set fruit. So anything under um, 85, they're going to set fruit for us. And that pretty much, I think that's pretty much all I have to show you over here. We got some stuff going on over there. I think I already showed you our yardistry greenhouse. So, um, oh, let me show you the garlic that we harvested. Not very good year because I I didn't anticipate all the rain that we were going to get. And I think I also forgot to feed them once or twice. But we do have some nice heads that we can use and store for replanting. But in the meantime, uh, it's been not a very stellar year. We have some more garlic plants in the ground that we can, uh, that potentially will produce nice heads for us. They're still nice and green, so we'll see. This is chestnut. Um, that's a particular type of hardneck variety. And these are hardneck varieties that you can buy at the supermarket and plant with. So go to the uh, organic section, get some garlic and you can plant them. Otherwise, these are what, probably 50 cents a, a, a head or even $2 a pound. If you buy seed garlic and um, known varieties, they're $16 a pound, or I think they're dirt. I don't know what the rates are, but they're astronomical. So um, it's really important that we be able to grow back the seed garlic because it's at a point where it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, that's it. Um, we're getting warmed with the sun. The um, Barbados or the Acerola cherries are making blossoms. So when it's warm, we're going to get a lot of fruit. So that's what we're waiting on. And then the tomatoes are sizing up and we're waiting on peaches to uh, size up as well. And 
We're continuing with succession sewing, working on our yard to terrace, uh, working on um, get growing more soil from the green manure that we grow, like broad bean. And the um, here's an example. The broad bean that we grow, we use as manure. We use it as fodder for the chickens to produce us uh, manure, and we grow with that. So that's what we got going on. I hope your, do, your garden's doing well. And if you have any questions for me, feel, please feel free to ask them, and I'll try my best to answer your questions. And until the next video, thank you always for supporting my channel, and I appreciate it very much. Have a wonderful day.